101.1 FM Abuja. My name is Ruth Usman and I'm being joined by OKK Igado Kure. Good morning to you. Good morning. Hope you had a good weekend. I tried. Okay. Mm. Well, it may have been good for others and not so good for many others as well as uh, we are very well aware of the continuous killing in many parts of you know uh, the country well especially looking at Benue state uh, rivers as well uh, and so many other uh, states so many people are still talking about it and uh, well the, the the nigerian police though uh, has finally finally uh, come into the picture so to speak as many people uh, I'm feeling like uh, the response is coming quite late. However, the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, had at the weekend placed the personnel of the Nigeria Police in Rivers and Benue states, as well as other contiguous state commands to uh, the two states on red alert. Uh, he also ordered the police personnel to embark on 24 hours crime prevention and visibility patrols throughout the country. Uh, the IGP further deployed additional five units of police mobile force, police special forces, police aerial surveillance helicopters, and special police joint intelligence and investigation teams to Benue and River States in an effort to forestall a further killing. In a statement by f the force uh, police public relations officer, CSP Imo uh, Jimo Moshid, he said the measures were taken uh taken to nip the bud uh, that that's to nip it in the bud and prevent further attacks on innocent nigerians by suspected herdsmen and other criminal elements i remember when we started talking about uh, this whole issue many people uh would just say what is government doing what is government doing that is focusing on central government and all that uh, but then the last conversation we had too we tried to uh, also bring focus to what is the government of the state you know the states in question what are they doing uh, however now people some people are of the opinion that uh, this uh response from the security agents is uh, a bit late what do you think about it well, we have not seen a departure from the old here. Um, what I mean is uh, because usually what happens with, with, with us is when it happens, then the security agencies show up. Hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm sorry to say, of course, in all these places that we talked about, already we have a security personnel, probably the military, the Nigerian police, and other people that have been there on ground. And I mean, we also understand the peculiar problems that we have, even with our security agencies. But what we've been seeing is a situation when there's an attack like this, when it happens, then we begin to hear about troop deployment. We, we start redeploying mm -hmm. troops, special units, uh, counter-terrorism units, uh, armor tankers to these places. But what Nigerians have been saying is that, is it not possible, for instance, for us not to even have these attacks? Why do we always have to wait on these attacks? When these attacks happen, then we begin to uh, um, um, bring in uh, huge uh, attention to these places. Hmm. Is it possible for us to begin to stop these attacks? And, that's, and that brings us to intelligence policing. In Benue State, for instance, there have been this tension between the headsmen and the farmers. Farmers accusing uh, headsmen of, of destroying their farms. Headsmen accusing the farmers of uh, killing their, their cattle. Yeah, yeah. So this has been ongoing for a very long time. And then after the, the anti-grazing law uh, bill was passed into law, it, it further increased the tension mm. because a, a faction of the headsmen had said, look, you are trying to take a uh, 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 bread from us. If you try to restrict us, it, it means you are tampering with a source of income. Uh, and I, I was wondering, uh, is it that um, when this bill was going on, for instance, have we taken time, Benny State for instance, to explain the benefits and the importance of this bill. Though I know change is difficult. It, it's mm. not what can happen immediately. 
because a, a typical headsman has been used to you know tracking with his with his cattles hmm. all around Nigeria, Africa, you know, trying to look for food and water. So if you tell him now to restrict uh, restrict his his uh, his cattles to one particular place. He may tell you, well, uh, my forefathers, this is how they, they did it, and this is what they taught us. So it may be a little difficult for them to accept. But then we need to ensure that we let them understand perhaps the benefits of these things. You know, this, this cattle track over a long distance. It affects their fertility. It affects their weight. Unlike if you ranch them, if mm. you put them in a particular place, and then you feed them, you see that they will increase in weight. That means more meat, more flesh. Oh, yeah, more, productivity more, would have uh, been yes, increased. Yes, more milk. Mm -hmm. Because whether we like it or not, these cattle don't speak. They don't, well, I, I'm sure the headsman understands their languages. They but will. then they don't cry out to say, look, we are tired. You know, we, we need to rest. And then you see them crossing, you know, mm. traveling miles. But, but what if you the, branch them, yeah. There's so much benefit to it, hmm. all right. So, we well, what does this situation say? Was yeah about uh, our security response? I mean, this has been going on for quite some time before the you know uh, New Year attack, which was more like yes, that, you know, that, that's why that was yeah. what it was bringing me to preventive measures hmm. really. So when this anti grazing uh, law was passed, there has been this tension. These people have been threatening. They said, look. They want to take our source of income, and we're going to defend ourselves. Mm. And, and then, if they come out to say we're going to defend ourselves, and then you should know that trouble was brewing. Mm. All right. And then we have the Nigerian Police Command in this state, where seated, mm. and and I'm sure they are aware of this tension between the headsmen and the farmers. And then, the question is, why do we always have to wait, especially in that state? until the whole community is sacked before we now go with the governor and cameras to move around the burnt houses mm -hmm. and, and then the burnt uh, bicycles and the burnt machines and then show graves of uh, people uh, who, who were killed. And then on, on radio, on TV, and then on, on the newspapers, we see the mm -hmm. governor moving around with security personnel. But the, you were there, this, pension, this tension was on. What did you do to ensure that you stop these things from happening? So we should be gaining, we should be using our efforts and our energies into preventing some of these attacks and not reacting to it mm. always. Now, the people that have died, I, I was reading on the papers how about 50 something of them would be buried. Mm. Uh, they were uh, going uh, to be given mass yes, burial. Yes, mass burial uh, on Thursday. All right? So. So with the counter-terrorism units, the special units, and all mm. these things that you're deploying them, is it going to wake up these people? No. It's not going to wake them up. So if we can, we, we're not saying the police or the security agencies can be at everywhere all the time. Because they also have their issues in terms of uh, personnel, adequate mm -hmm. personnel, equipment, and all that. Even though, I mean, we shouldn't even be having those issues anyway. But that's another topic for another day. Mm. So, but then we need to move ahead into serious intelligence policing, whereby we can prevent these attacks more. We may not be able to protect to prevent it completely, yeah, but then we happening. can minimize yeah. these attacks. I mean, if we had people like, for instance, the civil defense, if you know, you know, a very uh, volatile area, you know that there is tension something anything can happen you know sometimes uh, he said that the, the presence of the security agents you know it just has a way of uh, stopping uh, yes, people from course. you know carrying out certain things so if they had um, deployed that means perhaps it would have helped however now we have um patrol teams we we have uh, helicopters carrying out aerial uh you know views and searches all in that area and all that. These are things that perhaps if they were done before now, maybe, you know, we would not be talking about all of this uh, uh, deaths, of course the, killings the, here and there. Yes, of course, there may be fears. But beyond these helicopters hovering over these villages now, when these helicopters leave and we withdraw this unit, special unit, what is the guarantee that the lives of the villagers again will be secured? Mm -hmm. Won't some people also come and invade their, their, their communities again? And that's why we begin to think of, look, there, is there a possible way that we can 
we can stop these things from the root. All right? No, okay, with the presence of this huge security, uh, security presence in these places now, of course nobody may may get up again mm -hmm. to do something mm. uh, of course but the then the damage has been done the damage has been done so let's begin to treat these issues from the roots in such a way that we can eliminate the causes of this problem what is the remote causes of all this crisis and all these attacks if we begin to really go into it and try to tackle them this may be when we'll be talking about a lasting solution. Of course, all these uh, uh, security agencies and gadgets on ground, it's, it's beautiful. But then we need to look beyond the force now. And then silently, what are the remote causes of this crisis, of these attacks? How can we sincerely end these attacks? Mm. That's what is very important. And then we're saying the other time, the role of the community leaders the role of the youth leaders, the roles of our religious and traditional leaders are very key. Because these are the people that we, we look up to. These are the people that we respect mm. and we hear. Because these this attacks, people don't just wake up to attack. There's a planning. People, some people will group themselves together with a leader who will brief them on what to do, where we should go, how we should do it. And these people don't exist in the vacuum. They exist in our communities. And our communities have heads, have leaders. Can we begin to sincerely use these leaders in such a way that they can sincerely talk to their people, their youth, and say, look, this is not going to help us. All these repressive attacks will not help us. You don't need to invade anybody's village mm. because the person has done this, the person has killed your cattle, or the person has uh, destroyed your farm. All right? Can we settle this thing uh, peacefully? It's possible. We have security agencies whom we can talk to. We have you know, people that we can point at and they'll be punished, the bad eggs in amongst us. Mm. Let's not go to attack. I'm sure if we sincerely begin to talk to our people, maybe it will reduce a little. Not when um, uh, we talk to our people in the open and we say, look, uh, we, we are peaceful people, we don't fight, mm -hmm. we are this, we are that. And then in the evening, in the night, you call one or two persons and say, look, go and do this, go and do that. That's not what we're talking about. This really is sad indeed. However, the vice president, uh, Yemi Oshibajo, yesterday warned that the killings allegedly by herdsmen should not be politicized. That, that's the way, you know, uh, some other people are seeing it. I mean, just like he is seeing it. Do you s see that happening? Do you even see this perhaps uh, having the pos possibility of turning into some other form of, you know, well, well, we cannot, clashes? <laughs> we <laughs> cannot um, separate politics. For, from, from our lives. And then whether we like it or not, all the crises, most of the issues that we have have been traced to politics in one way or the other. I don't know why and I don't know how that happens. I, I don't see why people should use politics to destroy a life of their own people, mm. the lives of their own people. Or use I the lives of other people for the sake of politics. For the sake of really. politics. So I, I don't know, by the time you finish killing the people, who are you going to lead? Who are you going to represent mm. in the House of Red, for instance? Who are you going to govern? You, you understand? Mm -hmm. By the time, so if really our, uh, our politicians are behind some of these issues, I think it's a time for them to begin to, to stop. There are other ways. You, you don't have to instigate a group of people against a group of people so that you can prove a point that, look, this governor, for instance, cannot govern a state, mm -hmm. or, or this person, for this, this political party, for instance, cannot ensure the security of, of, of the people, so you don't have to vote mm -hmm. for them again. I don't think that's what we should be doing. I don't expect uh, our, our politicians to be, to, to be doing that. But if they're doing that, then I think the time has come for them to stop. And uh, because whether we like it or not, the poor man that is be, that is being killed by the end of the day does not know anything about politics anyway. Hmm. He, he doesn't even, in this country they don't even the poor man doesn't even have so much right or so I mean so much powers to 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 do much. So the poor man is there trying to farm, trying to take care of his cattle, trying to do small small things to ensure that he, he, his life goes on with his immediate family. And so you, that is a big politician somewhere, 
I mean, if if, if you if you are now instigating a kind of or taking steps that will jeopardize the life of these people, are the people that can be d described as the downtrodden, mm -hmm. then I, I don't think that is what anybody should do. As a politician, you should be able to sell yourself and without proving a point in the negative yeah. way. You don't have to go and cause trouble. Then they say, okay, this administration cannot take care of, uh, of the security of the nation, so let's vote them out the next time. That's not what we should be doing. I think what we need is sincerity of purpose. And we should, be, we should begin to preach what we call patriotism. Very, very key. I know what we hear is very different from what we do a lot of times. But let's begin to hammer on the role of patriotism. If we can love our country and love ourselves, a lot of these issues will be done with. Because if I love you, for instance, we, I cannot and do I know anything. You do. Yes, I, I know <laughs> I do. I can, never, I can never do anything that will hurt you, mm. not to talk of killing you. Right? And, and so we, a patriot will not do things that will hurt the country, will not do things that will hurt the nation. Anything that is not of interest to the nation, we, th that person will not, will not mm. do it. And I expect our leaders, our politicians, even ourselves to be patriots in one way or the other. Mm. All right, you're listening to X-Ray on Human Rights Radio 101.1 FM this morning. And uh, we're looking at security matters, especially with focus on the recent killings in the, some parts of the country, uh, looking at whether or not the response from the Nigeria police uh, force is perhaps a bit late. Though, you know, they've come into the picture right now. However, what do you think, uh, especially when it concerns our security, what do you think uh, the approach should be, the level of response uh, when it comes to prevention of some of these crises? Feel free to be a part of the conversation. Call the number 81 89 -99 Do remember to turn off your radio when you do call in. Hello? Hello, good morning. Good morning to you. Welcome. What's your name? Yes, this is uh, Jonathan, Mr. Jonathan. Okay, please go ahead. Uh, please, I, how can you help me to reach uh, Odmari Ahmed? You need to find time and call when the program is on. This is a different program right now, okay, Mr. Jonathan? Uh, uh, the program is the problem is on. I couldn't get you my well, sorry, call, that's call. all you can do, please. Okay, just try and call okay. back when he's having the program. Thank you. All right, this is X ray. Okay, uh, we're done with the other program, and you know what time it is, so please uh, just keep trying. It's not always easy, but you never can tell when your call is finally going to get through, so just keep trying. 081 1011 Hello. Hello, Sweet Ruth. Good morning to you, too. Sweet Ruth. I can hear you now. Uh, Spirit. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Okay, so go ahead. Actually, what we need right now in Nigeria for this security issue is cooperation and love. And uh, because if I should call call now and uh, give an information that something is about to happen that I have uh, uh, seen a kind of movement that is not likely and, uh, and I report the action they will take at that moment matters. Okay. So, uh, and I would like the police the, or the intelligence should be in every uh, should I say every council or every um, villages uh, if, if, if they are to be paid maybe with a small small amount of money that we give them accurate information I think that will go a long way to help us in this Nigeria okay yes even a, 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 just a, 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 a what, what will I, a, a peanut that they are paying those people. It will help a lot. It will go a, a long way to help us. May God help Nigeria. God bless human rights. No human rights, 
no voice. This is Edgar's promise, a.k.a. Spirit. All right, Spirit, thank you. Thanks for your contribution on X-ray this morning. 0818999011. That is the number to call. Hello? Please turn off your radio. Hello? Good morning. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. What's your name? Yeah, my name is Divine. Okay, Divine. Go ahead. Hello? Yeah, please. I want to. Um, I have an issue to um, report on the side, but um, I don't know the address. Yeah. Can, can I don't understand. You have an issue. What kind of issue you want to report? Yes, I want to be on the Ahmed Musa program early in the morning tomorrow. Well, if you know our station, perhaps you should find your way to our station. It's close to Games Village. Okay. Uh, our station, our station is close to Games Village. Perhaps you can come. Can I have your address, please? That's what I'm telling you. Just if you do, you know Games Village. Yes, I know Games Village. Uh huh. If you are there, you can find the station. We're very close to it. Okay. Okay. Yes, you right. you, you will see it. You will miss it. Thank you. Well, thank you, ma'am. All right then. Have a nice day. It's X-Ray on Human Rights Radio, 101.1 FM. Hello. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the program. What's your name? Uh, my name is Dave. I'm calling from Kaduna. David? Yes, from okay. Kaduna. Okay, please go ahead. Please, uh, in what the speaker is saying, please, I want to say something. So what about the killing in Southern Kaduna? Is it still the same thing being the issue of the law? Please, we need, we need to tell ourselves the truth in this country because, you know, hello? Yes, I'm, I'm listening. Okay. Well, we just lost that call there. I, but, uh... I, I, you know, when we're talking about the, the headsmen and um, farmer clashes, we're not just talking about just Benue State. I, I mean, we're talking about the issues is the same, is, is the same everywhere uh, um, in Nigeria. What the Cause what causes these clashes? The difference, I mean, we 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 will not uh, we may not be there. Hmm. If you're talking about farmer headsmen clashes, I mean, it, it's the same thing we're talking about. It's just that this one just happened in Benue. I mean, this this last one. Yeah, I mean, so what uh, we're talking about that we're not um, we're talking generally. Uh, well, when we started, I did say, you know, in many parts of yes. the country. But yes. of course, uh, we're mentioning that because uh, for now, though, it seemed to be on a large scale. I, I mean, when we always talk about the, the Boko Haram, then we know the areas where it was, yes. uh, you know, felt more. So, but then let's hope if he's able to call back, perhaps he still has a, a, an area he wants to point out. Hello? Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Please turn off your radio. Sorry, your name is? Augustus, Mr. Augustus. Okay, Mr. Augustine, you're welcome. Uh, good morning. Good morning once again. Yes. Uh, well, I thank you for the program. Uh, my issue is that the, the discussion you have here this morning, you see, federal government uh, sending money to the north area and the issue of uh, insecurity, this and that. Is it only that side alone, Boko Haram, that are attacking, that they can send their money and put their interest? And well, well they, 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 said, they said it was to tackle all other crimes ar uh, around the country. The, the focus may yes, be on Boko Haram. Well, that's what the news says, okay? The focus may be on Boko Haram, but then they were to also pay attention to other crimes around. Like kidnapping, uh, but This robbery. issue of uh, uh, this where we are considering now. Mm. I think this their cry is too much. I think this, since this regime has started, the, the thing is taking worse there. And government need to put eye. No matter what, whether it's from their, uh, the, the fault is from them or the fault is from the external people, the government should put interest and see what is the cost. Because they, they are climbing every day and night. So I, I don't see the reason that they, they are crying and government will salute them, you know, until, as you regularly said, until everybody dies. 
before they will not make effort to go and rescue them. I don't know. We are one Nigeria, and the government is responsible for every citizen that cries. No matter where you are falling, government should go and rescue you before finding what is the cause. Mm. So, but here, our government is not ready to do that. I don't know. So, that okay. is my, my own contribution. They should make efforts and rescue those people. That's my own. Thank All you. right, Mr. Augustin, thank you very much for calling. Uh, we, we we keep going back to government, government, and government. As much as, you know, a lot uh, has been placed in the hands of the central government, I wonder why we have some of these security agencies, why we have, you know, uh, government at state level. We have all these in place. Uh, but we seem to always be more interested in focusing at the top. I mean, I am not at the top. I'm not speaking for anybody here, though. Uh, but then why do we why is it that you know we, we have people started with different levels of responsibility why don't we you know allow people to, to to come out and explain whether or not they have actually done what they are expected to have done in certain instances what has you know each of these states the, the government there what have they done in particular before reaching out to cent to the central government I, I think people look at things that way because um the, the central government, like the president, for, for instance, takes responsibility for everything. But we know that the president cannot be everywhere carrying guns to pursue bad people in the society. Yeah. And so government, he has, um, government has, uh, there's, there's a delegation of responsibilities mm -hmm. and powers to everybody. All right. So it is for us now to do our responsibilities well. All right. Like we're saying in Benue, in Rivers, uh, uh, and in Lagos states where there's Bado killings mm. and in Ogun states, we have police commands in those places. Mm. We don't expect that the, the, the president or maybe the IG will go to those various states and then start pursuing the bad people. And, and I wonder people really, with all, of these, with all of these killings, why don't we hear people calling out the, the IG of police, for instance, and say, okay, we have security issues. What is police? Because that's basically, you know, uh, their responsibility. You hardly hear that. Uh, and yes, the, <laughs> the president, <laughs> maybe the chief uh, security officer, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but but why, why, why don't we commander. focus on these people that, you know, have been given the primary responsibility to do these things? And then if they fail, we tell them to their faces, oh, you people have failed. And then we look up there and say, okay, uh, come in, you know, the, the, the person at, at the top there and say, see, the person or the people uh, you've asked to do these things have not been able to do it. And besides that, I, I hear a lot of, even the vice president said it um, yesterday in his speech, uh, that some people are benefiting from this crisis. And it's not the first time we're hearing things like that, mm. that people benefit from this crisis. And I, I don't know if those people don't have blood running in their veins. And I don't know if those people are not Nigerians. Even if we have an external influence, why should you allow yourself as a Nigerian to mm -hmm. be used by any, against, any, your, uh, own against nation. your own people? So what can you benefit hmm. politically from people being killed? Is it for you to get to the seat that you want to get to? Or is it for you to sell arms? so that you can make monies, or is it for you to prove a point that this administration is not good, let's vote it out? Is it for them to, at what point will, it, will people begin to benefit from other people, your own people dying? Mm. So I think we should begin to change the ways we do things, especially now that 2019 is coming, all right? Some people have tendencies of heating up the polity for their own political reasons. And I think that's what the vice president is, is trying yes. to, to prevent. So I, I think we shouldn't do that. In, in individually, if we want to govern, if we want to lead our own people, we should, we, should, we should conduct ourselves in such a way that people will trust us and know that, yes, this you're the one that can be best to, there, to be there and represent us in one way or the other. Hmm. And not for you to go behind in the dark to, to you know, to do some things just just to prove a point we need to change our ways okay let's see who we have here hello hello good morning good morning welcome to x-ray what's your name yeah this is ben Gabelo, calling from Lukukuma. okay please go ahead yeah, it's the issue of this Fulani SMS. i've already used to see that some of our politician no concern is Fulani SMS. and i don't know that anything that happened in nigeria the nigeria government they used to take action in time, in everything now was before they now take time. And as uh, you see, the uh, federal government said that Nigeria should not import food. And this uh, this someone that full and they are killing, they are the one that provides food for Nigeria. And 
now. I don't know how now. Very short time. We are we are pushing recently. The time that every farmer will be prepared to move to farm. And because of the issue of killing of farmers, I, many farmers will not have mind to move to farm. I don't know how Nigeria used to take this granted. They should understand that it's the same these people vote them to pay this office. And they cannot keep silent and they will be seeing the death of all these people. I, I don't know, maybe if they kill everybody finish, I don't know, maybe they will, they will be a leader for just some people. I, I don't understand the way um, Nigeria government takes this. And even though they kill, or they kill, who feel like they kill at Kaduna, or they kill in Bini, or they kill in any way. Human being is human being. Human being is not animal. They should have a feeling, a sympathy of human being, that these people that they are killing, they are human being. They should take action before any before this now works. They should take action action of all this killing of this farmers around there. Okay. That is my contribution. All right, thank you very much. We appreciate. Okay, thank you. Okay. And his point here, really, though, regardless of where this takes place, whether it happens in the north, in the east, wherever, the most important thing is it's uh, it's affecting the, the country. It's a Nigerian. It's it's a human that you know whoever human's life that's killed, been taken. Whoever is killed is our own people. All right. So it's it's a serious issue, and common sense should tell us that another dimension that this thing is going to that we are not looking at seriously is is one of the things that he just said. When farmers cannot go to the farm. Mm -hmm. I mean, farmers are on their farms, and people, a lot of people and are still hungry. And you know there's hungry. no security. They say, I'm still hungry mm. in, in a lot of homes in Nigeria. Now, we have brought ourselves to a place where farmers, a typical farmer is afraid to go to the farm because of, because of, of, of the threat to life. And probably the, a, a typical headsman too is afraid of going out in case you know he'll be attacked too. So now, if we don't have food, if we don't farm anymore, if the farmers don't go to the farm, are we not talking of of, of farming? Hmm. If we have farming, if we if we run into that situation, we see pictures and we hear stories of Ethiopia and Somalia and all that. If that happens here, what will the people do? And that's why we we need to take these issues very seriously. Mm -hmm. Because by the time the farmers can no longer go to their farms mm -hmm. for fear and, and produce the food that we eat, because over 80% of the food that we eat is being produced by the, by the local farmers. And if the local farmers can no longer go back to their farms, where will the food come from? And there's no importation of rice. There's no importation <laughs> of rice anymore. <laughs> and even if there's importation of mm -hmm. rice, how does... Uh, the, 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 the people, I mean, the, the elderly in Nigeria... Oh, we, we, can we all we, cannot, uh, you know, uh, survive on afford, that. Yeah. Can everybody afford uh, um, imp imported food? Mm. And the answer is no. So we, we have people dying out of hunger. Mm. Well, we, we hope that it does not get to that point. We really, we do hope it doesn't get to that. And we hope that uh, the response from our security agencies will be uh, more prompt uh, be before being it being even prompt, then let the, let us have uh, enough um, intelligence gathering uh, to avoid these things from even occurring in the first place. The security architecture needs to be changed hmm. nationally, in all ways. We cannot continue to be doing things the way we used to do them. We need to think and think of how we can, you know, devise new ways hmm. or new means of tackling our security challenges. All right. And that's it on X-Ray this morning. Thank you for being a part of it. If you called in or you wanted to but could not get through, many apologies. However, we appreciate those who were able to call in with their contributions. And many thanks to Oikeke Igadokure for uh, being on X-Ray today as well. Thank you. My name is Ruth Usman. I'll see you in the 10 o'clock hour on Pro Bono Chambers. Do stay with us. Have you ever